Hi everyone. I wanted to share with you one of Andrea Mills' videos, which I had not originally watched. It was titled, When Someone You Love Dies. It was um, put out on April 5th, 2019. I watched all her videos religiously, but there was something about that video. I couldn't watch it because death and dying are just, they're very sad. And I've lost a lot of people in my own life. I remember being young and it seemed like we were burying everyone. My grandpa, my godmother, my godfather, and just everyone. So as a child, I saw a lot of loss. And then as an adult, I lost many people too, very close together. My my um, mom who gave birth to me, I lost her um, when I was 15 years old. I lost my dad in August of 2011. And I lost my, who I referred to as my mom. She was my mother's sister in October 2011, 10 weeks after my dad died. So death is always a hard thing to go through. And me being an only child, it was really hard because it was all on me. I had to do it all, everything, the the planning, the, the arrangements, the, as I call it, the after party. It's I never understood that, why people had a party afterward. Someone dies, it's, it's just... Since I was little, it just seemed disrespectful. Um, but anyhow, so I, I, I watched this because I wanted them to, you know, have another view on their channel. And it was just so, so touching. Okay, see, I'm not going to talk anymore about what she said. Because, um, if it, you know, if death doesn't bother you that much, if it bothers you so much, don't watch it. But it's just... How she talked about how she dealt with it and how she was helping her children. So going forward, because we all are born and we all die. That's what I, those are my words, not hers. But um, nobody gets out of it. Nobody gets out of death. Again, these are my words now I'm speaking. It doesn't matter how rich you are, how important you are, who you are. We're all going to die someday. And that's something that I just, I try not to think about. But she said when she went through this experience, she, she was hurt. You could tell she was hurt the way she was talking. And she broke down several times during the video. And she said she um, was asked by a lot of people, has she broken down? And she said no. And she thought it was because she went through the feelings that you go through, the grief, that you feel it. She said she wasn't crying anymore, only when, like now, she was doing that video, not now, when it was done. And um, therefore, life has to go on, which I know with, um, after my... Um, my mom who raised me died. The church gave me these pamphlets. Actually, they sent them um, like one and then six weeks later another, I don't know, some time period about grief. So you're supposed to go through the grief process so you're able to go on. And that's pretty much what she was saying is she felt what she was supposed to feel so she would be able to go on. And she knew that it wouldn't always feel this bad. And she was trying to let her children know about this because people die. Sad things happen. She said she didn't sit down and like have a talk with them, but just, you know, in passing when it was, you know, right when there was a segue. And basically what she was doing, she was leaving this without even knowing for her family, for them to heal. Now, I don't know. If they could even watch it now, 
and it's very hard for me to watch. It's still hard for me to believe she's gone and she's left her children and they don't have a mother and it's just, it hurts. It really does to think of that. But if you watch that video, the way she approached death and the loss of her mother, she said, besides Tom, and of course her children, but that's, you know, all she had. And the loss of anyone is, is just so hard. But she's right. Life goes on. The sun rises and the sun sets, if we like it or not. And this video was just so touching and so just a good lesson in how to deal with it. And it was put out in 2019, so it was nine years later. I don't know if it took her nine years to get to that point or what, but it, um, it just really made me start thinking about the, the death that I had to deal with and how horrible it was. And like I say, I'm not going to tell you any more about her video. You can watch it if you want. I don't want to give it away. But I know when my, um, when my dad, well, he had just, he had fell and broke, um, did he break, I think he broke a bone in the upper part of his leg. I don't know, he broke something, leg or hip, something. So it was nothing, you know, they brought him to the hospital and they were going to do surgery. And he, was, he wasn't, you know, old, old. He wasn't young, but he wasn't old, old. And they were going to do surgery and everything should be fine. So during that time, um, time period in August, my daughter, so this was 2011, which is eight years ago, um, my daughter had scheduled um, inpatient for 10 days in the hospital to check if she was having seizures. So three days before this, I got a call that my father was in the hospital. So I called my older kids and we went up to see him and, you know, he fell and everything is fine. He was in good spirits and everything. And so we stayed and chatted and, you know, he was waiting to find out about his surgery, which, I don't know, something just seemed wrong to me. Like, how long was he waiting? He had already been there the night before. And we were there quite a long time in the day, and I wasn't quite sure why. You know, we were trying to find out. But anyhow, you know, what could you do? You just wait, I guess. So I should have looked up the day of the week he he died and all this happened. But it doesn't matter. It was We were there. I'm sorry, these lights. I'm going to hold the camera straight. They're crooked. I'm trying to make them straight. So anyhow, we went to see him, my, my older kids and I. And I was going to come back the next day to see him. You know, I didn't know if he was going to have surgery. We are going to wait to, see, you know, wait in the waiting room or just wait to see him if he was still waiting to the, get a time for the surgery or whatever. Because the day after that, like the day we were there, two days later, my daughter had to go into the hospital and patient to have seizure studies done. So the next day... I was um, running around doing errands, getting stuff ready because um, Polly was little and I had to get all his medicine straight and his, his special diet and everything for his father to watch him while I would be gone with our daughter. So I was, I was driving and um, the phone rang and I... Um, couldn't take it because I don't have that hands-free. So I pulled over and I listened to the voicemail. And it was, I don't even remember now who called me. Oh, it was the hospital. A nurse from the hospital called and said, you need to come, your father's in hospice. And I'm like, what? 
didn't even make sense to me. What do you mean hospice? How could he be in hospice? So I just, luckily I didn't have anyone with me. And I um, went to the hospital. And I walked in, not into a hospital room, but I walked into a, a bigger, brighter room. And my father was just, he didn't even look alive. He was like breathing very weird, like gurgling sound. And um, my my kids were there. I don't know how they got the call. Maybe I called them. I don't remember. My older kids were there. And um, I, I just couldn't understand what was going on. So one of my sons said to me that um, that they think he got an embolism from breaking a, a longer bone. So that's what I'm thinking. Was it at the top of his leg or the hip bone? I don't remember. But anyhow, I'm, I, I just I couldn't understand. I mean, he was at fine yesterday, the day before that, and now he's in hospice and he's going to die. I just I couldn't make any sense of it. So my kids stayed a bit, and then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> my youngest child from my first marriage <clears throat> asked if I was going to stay or go, and I said I was going to stay. So he asked if I wanted him to stay with me, and I said, no, that's okay. So I will continue my story about what I went through, because this is about Andrea, but I just wanted to connect how the connections are because grief is an awful thing death is an awful thing and sometimes things happen so fast like in her case her mother had cancer so she said from the beginning she says she kind of was preparing herself because when you have cancer you know there's a possibility that you won't make it in my case my dad just fell broke something and was going to have surgery and be fine but either way her mother passed away my dad passed away my aunt who I called mom passed away my cousin passed away and we all have to deal with what is left the person dies and those of us that are left have to grieve and the sun still comes up and the sun still goes down and life still goes on. You may be going into the grocery store after for something or the drugstore, you know, doing what you have to do. Not everyone has the luxury of you can just sit down and cry and cry and cry. You know, you just have to continue on. Life does go on. It may seem like it doesn't. To me, when someone dies that I love, everything seems just so black and cold and just awful but if you watch that video of andrea's it really helps you to deal with death and whenever the time's right when her children and her husband watch that video i think it will help them through this like i say it's, it's almost like she was talking to them there are many things in her videos that she was helping others and didn't even know it I think I mentioned it before. I'm doing a video on something she did, like a helpful hint thing, which will be coming up too. But if you want to watch that one, it's really very moving. And I have the candles here because she had a candle when she did hers. And mine aren't real candles. Hers was a real candle. So, and I'm sorry, mine is crooked. But um, I just wanted to share this that even though she's gone, she had so many words of wisdom. And I would highly recommend to watch this video if you had any losses and, you know, you still haven't come to terms with it or life doesn't seem the same or just to watch something about death because it is something that I think most people don't deal with and have a hard time with. So if you want to watch it or if you can, It'll make you feel a lot better. So for now, don't forget to subscribe. I don't know if I could say to like this video or not. It kind of seems odd to say that. 
but don't forget to hit the notification button. Don't forget to share. Share this video because it may help some other people. Because I think it's hard for a lot of people to deal with death. And don't forget to pay it forward. That in a way could be paying it forward in memory of someone who's passed away. And it makes you feel good in your heart, Polly's heart, my heart, everyone's heart. Anyone that pays it forward, it feels good. So for now, if you want to watch that video, it's really, it just really moved me. And like I said, I'm a person, I just, death is just, it's ugly, it's awful, it's terrible, it's, it's lonely, it's just, all the negative things, but she totally turned it into not a positive thing, but a way to deal with it positively. So for now, bye.